what we really love about the house is walking through the front door and feeling a sense of sanctuary. You're sort of enveloped by the garden. You feel like you're part of a naturalistic setting rather than an inner city site. My name's Conrad Johnston. Um, this is the SRG house. I was the architect and it's also my family home. The house is in Balmain, on the western edge of Balmain, facing Ironcote Bridge. It is an amazing site in the sense that it still retains some of the natural qualities of Balmain, but it's also in a very urban environment. So when we saw the house originally, we weren't aware of the historical lineage of the house and also the fact that it was um, heritage listed. So after we'd seen it initially, we came back and did a bit more research to discover that it was both heritage listed and also owned by Sir Roy Grounds and his son. The condition of the house was very, very dilapidated. It had been um, lived in by the same person for 30 years um, who had done some quite unsympathetic alterations to the house. So it had a lot of things that were going against it. But what we really loved was just the sense of the bushland around it, the trees, and we could see that there was a real potential to create this beautiful house that had those qualities of the 70s, had the timber work, and it related to the naturalistic setting. It's an unusual house in the fact that it's three stories um, with a replicated floor plate. And the main floor where you enter into is the middle floor and to your left is the kitchen. Adjacent to that is the dining area, which is the inbuilt furniture. And then you step through to the living space which looks out over the water. Unifying the whole house is a connecting stairway which runs from the ground floor straight up to the top floor. That will connect you downstairs into a hallway which opens up onto the boys' bedrooms. Um, and then you walk through a little kitchenette down into the living space looking out to the pool. Downstairs in the original house was very underutilised. So in a sense, the project was about reimagining the ground plane to fit a lot more intense accommodation onto the site. I suppose the house had been so significantly altered, it was sort of like an archaeological dig where we started cutting away at this um, plasterboard and, and finding these amazing materials behind it. So we basically stripped it back to its concrete frame. And in that process, we discovered materials in the house that were part of the original design, which were used as a cue to, to what we put back into the house. Some amazing deep red tiles, a wood wall ceiling, which is a really great product that was from the 70s. So it was a more about being very judicious about what we put back in rather than trying to overplay the materials in the house. We worked with Sonia from Limesmith uh, she did a lot of research on um, Sir Roy Grounds. She did a lot of research on the 70s colours. And so she pushed me into selecting a whole series of really beautiful, rich, earthy colours that, that really related to the original materiality of the house. And we also utilised the materials to soften the sort of slightly harsh um, external appearance of the house. You know, some people say it's a brutalist house and some people say it's a Sydney school house, but it's basically concrete and timber. So. We've utilised the same materials, but maybe done in a more subtle way with curved banquette seating, rich brass bench tops, and a beautiful light birch plywood joinery throughout. So in a sense, it sort of dematerialises that really harsh geometry. One of the things about the house is it faces west and south. You know, the south windows made the house very cold and the western windows made it very hot. So we had both challenges to deal with and the technology of the 70s in glass was not as it is today. So the house, when we moved into it, was almost uninhabitable. So hot in summer um, that we had to all move down and sleep on the floor down at the bottom. And so cold in winter, we used to huddle around a fire, which was essentially like an outdoor fire. So our challenge was to do with changing the glass technology to really high performance glass, whilst retaining the, the rhythm and the um, facade aesthetic, but also make the whole house open so we could get that cool air to counterbalance the Western heat. Well, we really love the materiality of it. We love the timber and the concrete combination. The way the house sits in relationship with the water is really important as well, because it's an unusual grid. It's a zigzag grid. Rather than a very front-on house that looks straight at the water, this house has a more subtle and interesting way of, of relating to the waterfront position. And so you sort of get little snippets or little vignettes of the water from various places. And it's been referred to in the past as a tree house, because everywhere within the house, uh, you get a sense of the landscape and the garden beyond. So you feel like you're always sitting amongst the treetops. 
One of the key parts of the house is the central barbecue, which is a charcoal barbecue custom made by Godite Fabrication in the Central Coast. We looked at the barbecue as an event or ceremony around the barbecue, so it's, it's a really key part of the family life. All of the joinery is um, made from birch plywood, uh, created by a long-time collaborator, Peter Zalberg, who designs and works and builds our joinery for us. The dining table is from Koskela Design, which is a triangular shape. It's important to the house because it creates a centerpiece for the family together, but it also allows you to sit at the house just with one other person and create a level of intimacy. For the flooring, we've used uh, cork, which is a product called Corkwise from Market Timbers in Melbourne. It's a resilient type of flooring, but has a real softness and the colouring works really well with the project. The research for the tiles was, was a lengthy process and we ended up choosing Inax tiles from Artodomus because they had this beautiful hand-built Japanese quality to them that, that related to the materiality of the house. The most interesting product we've used on the project and it relates to the 70s is this wood wool ceiling. It's an amazing sustainable product that creates a real softness in the ceiling, is very environmentally friendly as it is made from recycled products. It also creates a really great acoustic environment within the house.